Mountain, which establishes that Jacob and Joseph also had dark skin. And since Moses was born to Israelite parents, then Moses was dark skinned. Now, Beit al Maqdis, Jerusalem, and Bethlehem are on the Abyssinian highlands where Moses settled with the Israelites. And then Jesus, who was sent as a prophet to the Israelites after Moses was born in Bethlehem in Abyssinia. This establishes that Jesus was dark skinned, born to Mary, a dark skinned mother. Jesus was not a European person with blue eyes, straight hair, and Caucasian features, as featured in many of today's churches. It's obvious that all those prophets, including Jesus, had very dark skin and their hair was black and curly. They had a Southern Arabian, Abyssinian type of feature because, as the Quran said, offspring, one of the other, and God is hearing, knowing. And another verse, God chose Adam, Noah, the family of Ibrahim, and the family of Imran above the nations. Offspring, one of the other, and God is hearing, knowing. Jacob, Joseph, Moses, Jesus all shared the same language, which is the South Arabian language spoken by southern Misr, Abyssinia and Yemen. Since all the prophets come from the lineage of Adam, these are they on whom Allah bestowed favours from among the prophets of the seed of Adam. Then do not forget that Adam is the father of humanity and that scientists have proven that the Abyssinian highlands is the cradle of humanity as they found there the very first human being to walk on the surface of the earth, according to DNA tests. They proved that the origins of humanity were black. Interestingly, the only prophet who had lighter skin was the prophet Muhammad, because he was not from the southern area. He was from the northern Arabian Peninsula. And his language was the Fusha Arabic, which was the language of the north. Can we further prove all this? Go back to the verses of Surat Atur by the Tor and the book written in organised lines on an unrolled goat skin and by the house frequented and by the roof exalted and by the bahra kept filled or the large body of water kept filled and let search in the Tor or the Abyssinian highlands for the book written in organised lines on an unrolled goat skin. You will find the secret in this book. In the heart of the Abyssinian highlands, the Tor, and inside of the city of Aksua, now called Aksum in Tigray, the oldest Bible on earth has been discovered. The writing is organised in fine letters in the Abyssinian language Giaz, a South Arabian language, as if it was written by a typewriter and in beautiful colours as if it was written recently. While its pages are straight and not flipped, the pages of the Bible are made from dried goat skin or wreck as it is called in Arabic. This is very significant because the skin of the goat or wreck is an organic material that contains carbon atoms which can be recognised by radiated carbon testing to clearly identify the age of the document. According to these tests, it is the oldest Bible in the world, dating back to 330 AD or more than 2000 years. The local monks believe that this book holds magic properties. It has been preserved as one book without any damage or deterioration to the beauty of its writings and colours over time. Despite the Italian colonisation of Abyssinia and a fire in the church, the book is still perfectly preserved. You'll find in this book three important pieces of information. First, the Jerusalem Temple is located in the Abyssinian Highlands, the Tor. The theologians Judas Mackenzie and Francis Watson have deciphered the oldest Bible, the Bible of the Abyssinian Highlands, the Tor. And while exploring the pictures in the Bible, they came across a very famous one that's present in every Bible throughout history, the picture of the Jerusalem Temple. And to their surprise, this picture of the Jerusalem Temple is the Abyssinian Temple. The picture of the Abyssinian temple is well known for its square, wide-framed, blind windows subdivided by a cross that are later found on the rock-cut churches at Lalibela. And the windows on this building are similar to Aksumite and later Ethiopian architecture. However, it's notable that the columns do not have the attic bases used on their frames and in Roman and late antique architecture on Corinthian columns. Rather, close inspection reveals that they have plain stepped bases. It's a unique structure to the Lalibela Abyssinian temples and the picture included the waterways that are passing under the Jerusalem temple that look identical to the real one. Second, in this book, which has been proved by carbon dating to be the oldest Bible on earth, is a picture of Jesus as a dark-skinned person with curly dark hair and not the Caucasian that is present in many other churches. Also, the pictures of Mary show her as a dark African woman different from the pictures of Mary elsewhere. 
This piece of information is also proved by forensic medicine in a study performed by a specialist in medical drawings and forensic medicine, Richard Neve. He examined three Semite skulls for the Israelis using the latest in medical scanning technologies. Neve was able to depict the closest and most accurate illustration of Jesus. The illustration, as you can see, is for a tanned man with dark curly hair and with facial features similar to Southern Arabian features. So since there have never been any actual drawings of Jesus discovered, scientists are calling this the most realistic drawing of Jesus ever created. Third, the journey of the Holy Family started from the south from Abyssinia, passing through Sudan by the Valley of the Nile up until it reached Asiut in Egypt as we know it today. The Holy Family established the first worship place which is now known as the Church of Miriam in Deir al marek in Asiut. It is not a surprise that this church now holds significant status around the world because it is the only church built by Jesus himself and is obviously considered a tourist attraction. The Holy Family lived in Asayut for six months and ten days, which is considered the longest time they spent in one place during their journey in Misr, Misr which means Egypt plus Sudan, and until the Abyssinian highlands where the River Nile originates. The essence of the problem is replacing Misr in recent Bibles with Egypt.